Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Got another Mafia 2. We're going to be doing Chapter 5 in the great 1945 Little Italy, New York. And I'm going to be reviewing T. Martin 2 again, who was pretty good in the last time. I don't just think he's a criminal, which I'm glad. And he doesn't think like I do. But before I get started, everybody, check us out on YouTube member programs. Check us out on Patreon. All right, let me jump right in here and let's jump to Chapter 5. And it's a hit. The Buzzsaw. Okay. Now, it's still 1945. Like I said, I like that era in this Mafia 2. I don't know if they're all like that. I'd like to see a newer one, but more my era would have been better. Let's do the Buzzsaw Chapter 5. All right. Well, we're going to get dressed again. Holy cow, how many times are we are going to get dressed in this episode? Here he is. He gets dressed in the same clothes. You're going to see the same people, you get the same clothes. Now, jackets are. Everybody used to wear the same jacket, obviously. You had a leather jacket or a big parka or whatever it is in New York in the, in the cold weather back then. But if you're trying to impress people and you're starting to do that kind of stuff, I think you would wear something different. I mean, even maybe a fedora. Hats were big back then. Oh, nice Back accident right off the bat. If you can't drive, you should stay home where you belong. Hey, I think it's time to... Over there? Well, one of them anyway. To pay this guy a visit. Up my car. Good for you, T. Uh, T Martin. Go pay this guy a visit. Who, who's he to talk to women like that? I can't stand... I can't stand bullies. You all know that. Why do you gotta pick on someone who's weaker than you? I don't like people who pick on people who are weaker. Pick on me, motherfucker. Yours. Look at my fucking car! Hey, buddy. You need to hey, take Kyle, a chill pill. Knock it off. Tell him, T. T. Martin. Take a chill pill. Is right. And who the fuck are you? Somebody who doesn't like hearing you talk to a lady like that. So why oh, I like Vito for that. Even though he whacked eleven cops. Good mood, huh? What is she, your girlfriend or something? Well, if she's not gonna pay for it, you will. One more word, and you're gonna need a new set of teeth. Now get the fuck out of here. I... That was the word. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> here we go. Oh, oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Bam, bam. Couple of lefts, guys. Down. Now, uh, why were you doing this? You should have stopped on him. Got him. All right, now he's talking about lo almost losing that fight. Let me tell you something. Street fights don't go like that. They don't go just two guys. You get wild. You street fight me, it's a street fight. I'm going to do everything I can to step on your fucking neck and do what I can. And the guy wouldn't have got up the first time because he'd have been stomped on. And then I'd have been grabbing his head and fucking pounding it into the concrete. Oh, I know these things get me excited. I don't know. I, I get a little bit up. I, I, I got to watch myself. We were taunting him so much. Thanks, handsome. I owe you one. Do you want to come over to my place for a piece of pie? Ooh. Yeah, thanks. Do you want to come uh, over to my okay, place? I really got to get going. Okay. I thought she was walking away from her car. I was going to be like, are you just going to leave your car? Oh, she's going to take her car? All right. I'm going to take old dudes. I feel like I feel like I need a new car. Jefferson Provincial here. Good call, I, T. Martin. Well, I, I, liked, I liked the sound of that. You know, now that you, you mention it, I am kind of hungry for some dessert. I, I do <laughs> like pie. Yeah, he's hungry for dessert, all right. After lunch? I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, he wants an afternoon thing at t -Mart. You want an afternoon delight, huh? Good for you. Enough getting sidetracked. Let's get over to, to Freddy's for lunch. Hey, fellas. Hey. Hey, Vito, this is Luca Garino. He'd like to talk to you. Luca Garino. This is Vito. Good to meet you, Mr. Garino. No need to be so formal. Look at that guy. See, he got the little mustache. That's not a mustache, Pete. Mustache Pete's. Although, whenever I see a mustache on a mob guy, you will never see that. Mob guys are all clean shaven. You'll never see that. You never see him with a goatee like me or a beard or even that. Now, the mustache peats, I'm going to give you a little education. Mustache peats came from Italy. They usually were murderers or whatever they were in Italy. They come here and they had bigger mustaches. And they were called by the Americans mustache peats. Now, the mustache peat guys... Well, the older mobsters, they, they were out in the 20s. That's, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Joe Masseria was killed by Lucky Luciano and that crew. Those guys. There was the wars, the Masseria, uh, Calabranjo, Masseria Wars and all that. But those were mustache peats. And they did, they wanted to bring the old Italy to America. 
but they really shook down their own people big time. Where the new American mob, even though they shook down their own people, they just wanted to work with anybody. They'll work with Jewish guys, black guys, Spanish guys. They don't give a shit. They want to make money. Irish guys, they didn't give a shit, as they shouldn't. But the old mustache peats were very old Italy kind of stuff. It's what I call mustache peats. I hope you learned something there. I heard about you running with the mix. <laughs> Great fucking story. <laughs> And I want to congratulate you, too, on a job well done. Salud. That's salud. Salud. Chin down. You guys we used to say chin down, which means 100 years of good luck in, in Italian. Or chin down, 101 years of good luck, and you, you do the glass. Now, let me teach you something about the glass. If you do that to somebody, chin down, or chin down, and you put that glass down without drinking, that's disrespect. It's like saying, oh, fuck you, yeah, okay, and put it down. Uh-uh. That guy's gonna look like, who the fuck you, you know, you, that's not right, you don't do that. I'm wondering if you are ready to take the next step. Yeah, sure, uh, what next step? I'm talking about taking somebody out. Just cause someone points his finger at him and tells you to do it. So we're a hitman now. I was in the war, Mr. Garino. Good point, T. Martin. Now they're a hitman, but not really. All I did was kill people I was told to kill. People the president pointed his finger at. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. The president. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> but you're, uh, you're talking about the crowds, right? You know, the bad guys. That's not what I mean. Understand? Yeah, I understand. Good. We need guys like you. Guys who can follow orders without asking questions. Luca's right. Guys who don't ask questions, and I never did. What they're proposing to Vito here is your next step to get in a mob would be to whack somebody, or you, you know, to get made. Is okay, you're gonna whack somebody, you're gonna do do work for somebody, and uh, this is what they're, they're kind of telling him to do. You handle the last one, and there's a good chance you'll be accepted into the family. See? After you pay the initiation fee, of course. And how much is that? Five grand a piece. That doesn't happen. They're not paying to be in there. You're already paying like we were, like I was, or anybody was. You're paying with your jobs, your percentage ticking up, up the ladder. But they're not paying a fee. I never heard of that. Maybe somebody who's made could tell me that one. Never heard of it. And I know a lot of guys. So I would have heard that along the line. I never heard, oh, you got to give money. Now, do you have to make a party? Do you have to throw something up to the boss? It's not like paying initiation fee. They told the both of them like that. Do this job and you get it. That wouldn't happen either. Just do this job. You don't tell them when or if you might make. You know the game. Everybody knows the game. That's a fucking fortune. <laughs> hey, nobody said it was cheap, huh? 5000 in 1945? It'd be like 100000 today or more. But trust me, the benefits far outweigh the cost. I'll leave it up to you two to decide. Henry's gonna fill you in on the rest. I'll see you guys there later. There you are. Hey, you boss. You take care of that thing we talked about yet? Yeah, yeah, it's all under control. That's Henry's what you said the last time. Don't disappoint me again. Boss, I Don't. I, 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 now come with me. We got some other business to discuss. That wouldn't happen either. Now, it seems like Luke is a, at least a made man. Maybe a, a capo. I don't know. Probably just a made man. Now, that other guy's the capo. He, that guy's not going to slap a made man in front of everybody. No way that would happen. Can't do that. So that's a little bit out of here. I know uh, T. Martin doesn't understand the mob life like that. But that wouldn't happen. So, Henry, what kind of job are we talking about here? I got to take a guy out. Unless Luca is actually the capo and Henry might be the made man. That's what it looks like to me since the start of this. So there's no way the boss or even the underboss or Casigliari, which is right in that chain of command there. It goes, you know, the boss, underboss, or underboss, Casigliari, and then it goes down. No way are they going to slap the guy in front of people like that. No way. It's my contract, but I need some help. That's where you two come in. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely Henry's the made guy. Mr. River, the guy's been warned, but he thinks he's untouchable. Huh. And is he? Well, somebody tried to take him out once before. And? 
Let's just say they slightly underestimated him. How much is slightly? Fatally. That's a fancy way of saying they're dead, right? Hey, they fucked up. We won't. He's a moron. The big guy. That guy's a moron. We'll sit there and we'll wait till that fat fuck shows up and then boom! We blast his ass. How are we gonna do that? With an MG-42. Uh... Where are we getting an MG-42 from? No way! Harry. Yeah. I'm with you, T. Martin. No way. First of all, I don't even know what MG42 is. We'll find out. Like you. He's got a private little gun shop over in Kingston. Kingston had to be Jamaica, Jamaica Queens uh, area. That's what I'm thinking. You know, I like the way they do these infer areas. Get your anything from a pea shooter to a bazooka. And you don't need no fucking gun license, neither. You know, that is all true, and I don't even think they had gun licenses back in those days. And if they did, how are they going to track them? So, in 45, I don't think they did. Okay, Joe and me will go to the apartment. You go pick up the machine gun at Harry shop in Kingston. It's all paid for. Just tell them I sent you. After that, meet us at the apartment. It's in Sand Island. The building across from the distillery. Apartment 233. The minute they said Sand Island, what jumped in my mind, I'm just have to say in this, is I was stationed in the Coast Guard in Hawaii on Sand Island. So if anybody here is from Hawaii, you'll know where I was. I was at the Coast Guard station on the Jarvis in Sand Island, Hawaii. Obviously, it is not Sand Island, New York, uh, but there is a Jamaica, Queens, and stuff like that. So. Looks like this is the spot. We go ahead and leave the car here. It's going on a luncheonette. Luncheonette? No, that's not it. No. It's got to be something right. around back. No, Army, Army Navy, Navy store, always. Of course it's a back alley business. Hope you're not burying a body. He's like shoveling coal or something, I'm not sure. No, T. Martin, you're right. Coal back in those days was a big deal. That's how they heated houses. Is it not burying the body out there? It was a hump too high. You gotta go down to bury. Yeah, who is it? Uh, Henry Tomasino sent me to pick up the stuff he ordered. All right, come in. Henry Tomasino. This isn't shady business at all. Good point, T. Martin. Talk about shady. Hello. So, uh, you're the guy Henry was telling me about, huh? Yeah. He got his merchandise. <laughs> yeah, well, here it is. MG-42, made in Germany. Hitler's buzzsaw. That's what an MG-42 is. I don't even know if it's a legit gun. I'm not a big gun guy. Hey, you need me to show you how to use it? No, thanks. I'm familiar with him. I was in the service, too. No shit! Wait, wait are you kidding me? Where, where were you? you? What was it, Normandy, huh? No, Africa? Oh, right, let me guess. Uh, Operation Husky. Yeah? What unit were you in? 504th Parachute. No shit, you were a paratrooper? That was kind of hairy, I heard. Yeah, well, it wasn't no picnic, I tell you. I got hit, so they sent me home. Yeah, any medals? Yeah, Purple Heart and a DSC. DSC, Distinguished Service Cross. Big time. Purple Heart means when you get you get wounded. Could be anything. You could sprain your ankle and get a, a Purple Heart uh, in battle. Obviously, it's usually, you know, get nicked, shot, something like that. Could be, you know, concussion grenade, something like that. Anything. But a distinguished service course, I, I don't know if it's the second or third highest. The Medal of Honor, obviously, in the military. But it's funny because I'm watching these guys talk military. I do the same thing. I really do. I know it's some fucking old, old man shit I do. But they're young. But this was after the war. This is 1940, you know, 1945. So the war just as either ended or didn't end yet. Ooh, you got a cross? Let me tell you, they don't give those babies out for nothing. I was in Normandy. We hit Utah Beach. Yeah, that wasn't no picture neither, but... Uh, no shit. The invasion of Normandy was one of the biggest invasions. It is the biggest invasion, I think, ever in the history of war. And Omaha Beach and Utah, all those shit, uh, those beaches, are de they were death pools. Amazing, amazing how many people we lost. And it's amazing, you know, how they coordinate that and, and people die. But you're dying for your... That's what war was about. Because if we lose the war, we're speaking German or Japanese, whatever the fuck it is. But we're losing the war. Drive the van safely to meet Harry and Joe. All right, you know what? We're going to turn on that uh, that speed limiter then. You see that they got there? I, I never saw that in any other game, the speed limiter. I mean, you can't, you set the speed limit, you can't go over it. That's pretty wild. I think this is our, our new apartment. 
apartment 233, Misery Lane, two hours. Okay, look at the apartment name, everybody. Misery Lane. <laughs> I love these games, man. They, they come up with some good shit. Come on, guys. I love that. 233, Misery Lane. Uh... Typical. A lot of robberies and a lot of whatever you're doing out there in the criminal world is being patient, waiting, waiting for someone to come, waiting for the go, waiting the case to place, waiting whatever you need to do. So patience has a lot to do with it, it really does. Where are you from, Henry? Sicily. What brought you to the States? Mussolini. Yeah, we buy your ticket. Don't be a smart ass, Joe. My father was a, a man of honor. He's talking about how he got to Italy and how, you know, Mussolini kicked him out. And that, that is true. Mussolini was tough on, on, on it. He was the dictator in Italy. Uh, he was with the Germans, actually, and uh, not with, you know, sided with them. And Mussolini also, uh, uh, they went out, but he said his father was a man of honor. Man of honor means a made guy in Italy. And he had connections, so he sent his son to New York uh, to get out of the war. And then he hooked him up with someone to work with, probably the big boss there. Or a Luca, at least. Or somebody higher than Luca. See, they're noticing people in the window. That's pretty stupid. They're coming. Those black cars. Vito, aim for the fat bastard. We gotta nail him before he gets in the building. Get ready. All right, I'm on. All right, showtime. They got guns up there in that window. They got guns. Of course they got guns. Go. I feel like we probably could have been a little bit safer in our, uh, our stakeout. That's a nice gun at M MG42. And he's right. t -Mart was right. Could have been safer. All right. Here we go. We're going to chase him into the factory. Now, I might have took that gun if I was him. It said 25 pounds. I could have handled that. I might have taken that gun with a belt or two and wiped some shit out. You can't fucking miss. I'm a little more portable, man. Now, we already know Vito's a murderer. Move it, Vito. They're down. Shoot him in the leg. Shoot him in the head ammo off these boys. All right, we're good to go. Okay. Here we go. You, you know, Vito killed 11 cops in the, in the jewelry store robbery. Woo! He's whacking him on this one, too. You ready for it? This elevator could not be any slower, bro. T. Martin, I understand what you're saying about the elevator being slow, but if you ever been in a building in New York and you go to the freight elevators, or you go, uh, the, the, you know, to call the cargo freight elevators, they are slow. And could you imagine in 1945? Lucky you fucking had an elevator. Vito, go do something. You can't just fucking see it. What the fuck do you expect me to do? Now, I gotta stop it here. You tell me it would be nice to have that M, what is it, MG42 with the 2,500 rounds a minute and the belts of 250 rounds. It'd wipe everything out and you'd be done. Gotta think, gotta think. <laughs> Bro, this thing, this thing shreds. Yeah, he's right, this thing shreds and he's a hell of a shot. Okay, here's the guy they're after. You don't think he would be there or he'd have been ready to go with guns or whatever? Please, I got a wife. I got a wife. You should have thought about your wife before. You're so going. Oh, my God. Don Clemente sends his regards. Oh, fuck. Fuck you. Sorry, you was fucked. Pretty good scene, guys. First of all, that guy should have shot Vito, not in the leg, in the fucking chest, and then immediately shot the other two if you're gonna do that. They gave the other two a chance to blow him away. Henry, you okay? Henry. Great graphics. I'm not fucking okay. He shot me in the fucking leg. Oh yeah, it's bleeding all Son over the place. Get me to El Greco. The fucking painter? No, the fucking doctor, okay, you idiot. Get easy. I'm gonna get you there in a minute. The Greek guy lives up in High Park. Right, let's get you to the oh, car. Oh, Maron, uh, you're heavier than you look. Bro. You know, I gotta say, we had a guy 
uh, later. I, I, I was actually going to take my brother to a veterinarian. Obviously, you guys know that story. If you haven't, just check it out in the playlist when my brother got shot and I got shot up through the head. You know, it skimmed me. He got hit, really. Uh, mine was like a, a, a scrape that just a little blood trick in there. Nothing big. All right, fuck. He almost shot my balls off. Take it easy. He missed him by a mile. Yeah, they're so small, it's... It's hard to hit him, bro. You hear you, 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 T. Martin said? He goes, he almost shot my balls off. Too small. That's what T. Martin Too small. <laughs> almost impossible to hit him. That is funny. He had the sirens in the background? Conspicuously, but quick clock. Here we go, baby. Oh, shoot, we're racing the clock. Oh, inconspicuous. T. Martin says, it can be, look what you're doing getting out of there. Inconspicuous. <laughs> It's going 80 miles an hour. That's pretty fast back in that day. The size of a fucking golf ball. And you're telling me to relax? Just get me to El Greco, damn it. I got you, bro. Grand Upper Bridge. That's the Brooklyn Bridge. There's an upper and a lower. I might calm you down a little bit, homie. And it's built just like that, guys. You see the beams over it. It's, that's legit. That's the Brooklyn Bridge. That is the Brooklyn Bridge. Not the Upper Grand Bridge, whatever the fuck they said. Of course you did. He's the guy you go see when you can't go to the hospital, genius. Why the hell wouldn't you be able to go to the hospital? Because you go to the hospital with a bullet in you, the first thing they do is call the cops. You know, he is correct on that. I don't know if it was back then, but you go to a hospital now and you have a bullet wound, the cops are there. So that's why we couldn't take my brother. It just couldn't happen. You shouldn't need to visit him, though, Vito. You've always been a quick healer. It must be your diet. Yeah, it's my diet. Yeah. Just now... They didn't show them putting any tourniquet or anything over that wound to stop the bleeding. Because if you hit an artery, he'd have been dead already. Cops on our back right there, they almost... Oh, almost hit the lady with the umbrella. Hey, Vito, step on it. Henry sweating like a whore in church back here. You don't <laughs> make me drive faster, you start a seat. Start a seat. me shut up. You all Greco the doctor? No, I'm the fucking painter. A friend needs help or he's gonna bleed for Thanks, Doc. Oh, God, Henry. We owe you. He knows him. Henry! Wait. I got money for you. For the job. Take it. You know this could have waited. Well, thanks. And hey, thanks for everything. Hope you'll be okay. Yeah. Me too. I'll stay here with him. <sighs> Meet me in my place. <sighs> All right. You have the cash repay for your father's debt. Visit your sister. Oh! Two thousand dollars for that job, bro. We are, we are. Two thousand dollars back in those days was a lot of money, everybody. So I think that was pretty cool as well. I thought this was a pretty good one. I think they were both pretty good. The graphics are good. Uh, T. Martin did a pretty good job. Had a great time, everybody. I always do. Remember these are games. Have a good day, everybody. Please make good choices. Life's too short. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. See you soon.